let us now focus on the main features of Gothic art. 1100 to 1400. As in the other chapters, you shall be learning the chapter with the following objectives. Acquire the basic vocabulary, concepts and criteria for understanding, interpreting and analyzing Gothic art. Encounter significant works of the period and enable, and enable them to study later works influenced by this period. <coughs> Understand and appreciate the role of values, beliefs and ideas in shaping the art of the times. In this chapter, which will be an introduction to Gothic art, we will understand the socio-economic scenario in Europe at the beginning of the Gothic period. We will also look at the various characteristics of Gothic art, namely groins, wards, architectural inventions, use of new material, ornamentation techniques, etc. Let us begin with the introduction now. Gothic as a term is applied primarily to the art produced in Western Europe from about the middle of the 12th century in France to the 16th century in other parts of Europe. The Italians first used this term to describe the pre-Renaissance style. Literally, Gothic refers to the Germanic tribes who invaded Greece and Italy and sacked Rome in 410. Florentine historiographer Giorgio Vasari, 1511-1574 was the first to use the word. While the Goths were blamed for destroying what remained of the classical style. The origin of Gothic art had nothing to do with what had happened several hundred years earlier. Even though the confusion got clear in the 19th century, it was not possible to go back from the word Gothic. Later, it was also used for secular buildings such as castles, palaces, bridges, city walls, and gates. Over time and across Europe, Gothic developed into a family of related styles. Gothic style of architecture first emerged in northern France in around 1440, when great churches moved towards greater height, light and volume in terms of its construction. Gothic architecture developed in the Christian paradigm and finds its most meaningful expression in churches. Clerics now wanted taller churches and more windows as opposed to the darker Romanist churches. The, this demand was in keeping with contemporary times when people began to take a more rational view of God and at the same time saw God as encompassing virtues such as light, reason and proportion as against the mysterious world of the Romanesque. The Gothic church was now a setting for light and purity that could be an image of him. The middle class also had a large influence on Gothic style as they desired churches that could reflect their economic power and social status. This transformed the interior of many cathedrals into inspirational centuries where illiterate congregations could see the story of the Bible illustrated in the beautiful stained glass art of 
use windows thus outweighed the massively thick walls small windows and dim interiors came soaring ceilings reaching to heaven thin walls and stained glass windows now there were new features soaring gothic arches thin walls and huge stained glass windows which flooded the interiors with light by modifying the system of ceiling vaulting and employing flying buttresses to change how weight was transferred from the top down gothic architects managed to radically transform the interior and make it a far greater visual experience everything was taller and more fragile looking and colonnades often reached from the floor to the roof pulling the eye up with dramatic force and mosaics huge carved or painted altarpieces fonts and pulpits vivid stained glass art illuminated gospel manuscripts and exquisite ecclesiastic metalwork and you can understand why gothic cathedrals are seen as some of the greatest works of art ever made religious gothic art that is architecture relief sculpture and statuary is best exemplified by the cathedrals of the north france notably notre dame the paris rims and chartres as well as cologne cathedral st stephen's cathedral vienna and in england westminster abbey york minster the gothic period was a, a time of both communal achievement and social change the european cities became more prominent than ever the cities the city fostered strong communal identity by public projects and ceremonies intellectual life was also stimulated by the interaction of so many people living side by side universities and brilliant teachers like peter ablerd 1079 to 1142 drew crowds of students and in the 13th century an italian theologian thomas aquinas 1225 to 1274 made paris the intellectual center of europe scholasticism a system of reasoned analysis emerged from these universities it reconciled christian theology with classical philosophy since a question and answer method of argument emerged to arrange ideas into logical outlines thomas aquinas and former scholastic applied aristotelian logic to comprehend religion's supernatural aspects setting up the foundation on which catholic thought rests to this day some have seen a relationship between the development of these new ways of thinking and geometrical order permits the design of gothic cathedral as well as with the new interest in describing the appearance of the natural world in sculpture and painting urban cathedrals the seats of the ruling bishops are now the new centers of religious and cultural patronage and superseded rural monasteries earlier cathedrals were rebuilt between 1150 and 1400 often to replace earlier churches destroyed in fires cathedral precincts function almost as towns within towns they contain a palace for the bishop housing for clergy 
and workshops for the multitude of artists and laborers necessary for support of building campaigns. These gigantic churches as dominant they were on the urban landscape and environment were also a source of resentment, urban rioting sometimes because of their enormous expense. Let us now look at the characteristics of Gothic architecture. Gothic architecture emerges as a result of great engineering innovation. How to create wider surfaces in stone along with higher structures. It is known that Romanist buildings have either stone barrel poles or groin walls, making their walls thick and allowing for small windows only. In the Gothic period, Architects adopted the pointed up, which has a lesser lateral thrust than the round arch and is easily adaptable to opening of various widths and heights. This allowed for the resolution of the wall and fluid arrangement of space. Since the also developed a system of stone ribs to distribute the weight of the vault onto columns and piers all the way to the ground. The vault could not now be made of lighter, thinner stone and the walls opened to accommodate ever larger windows. The emphasis of the Gothic architecture is its vertical aspect. On the exterior, the vertically, on the exterior, the verticality is emphasized in a major way by the towers and spires and in a lesser way by strongly projecting vertical buttresses. The narrow half columns called attached shafts, which often pass through several stories of the building by long narrow windows. Vertical mouldings around doors and figurative sculptures which emphasizes the vertical and the open attenuated. The roof line gable ends, buttresses and other parts of the building are often terminated by small pinnacles. Milan Cathedral as an example. On the interior of the building attached shafts often sweep unbroken from floor to ceiling and meet the ribs of the vault like tall trees spreading into branches. The local availability of material affected both construction and style. In France, limestone was really available in several grades. The very fine white limestone of Chien being favored for sculptural decoration. England had coarse limestone and red sandstone as well as dark green perfect marble which was often used for architectural features. In northern Germany, Netherlands, northern Poland, Denmark, and the Baltic countries local building stone was unavailable but there was a strong tradition of building in brick. The resultant style brick gothic is called backstand of gothic in Germany and Scandinavia and is associated with the Hanseatic League. In Italy stone was used for fortifications but brick was preferred for other buildings. Because of extensive and varied deposits of marble, many buildings were faced in marble or were left with undecorated facade so that this might be achieved at a later date. The availability of timber also influenced the style of architecture with timber buildings prevailing in Skinner Scandinavia. Availability of timber affected methods 
of road construction across Europe. It is thought that the magnificent hammer beam roofs of England were devised as a direct response to the lack of long straight season timber by the end of medieval period when forests had been disseminated not only for the construction of vast roofs but also for shipbuilding. One of the major hallmarks of Gothic art was its unique integration of the arts of sculpture, stained glass and architecture. Notably, in the great cathedrals of Chargis, Amiens, Reims, Notre Dame Paris, the unprecedentedly huge windows filled with beautifully translucent holy images, exotic murals and frescoes, along with the mosaic art, created an evocative humanistic atmosphere, quite different from the earlier Romanist movement. The Gothic cathedrals was similar to Romanist. One remained faithful to the tradition of basilican form. It consisted of a central wave flanked by angels, with or without transept, and was terminated by a surrounded by an ambulatory with chapels. These elements, however, were no longer treated as single units, but were formally integrated within a unified spatial scheme. The exterior view was frequently dominated by twin towers. The facade was pierced by entrance portals, often lavishly decorated with sculpture, and at a higher level appeared a central stained glass rose window. Additional towers frequently rose above the crossing and the arms of the transept, which often had entrance portals and sculpture of their own. Around the upper part of the edifice was profusion of flying buttresses and pinnacles. The flying buttress is the defining external characteristic of Gothic architecture. These buttresses effectively spread the weight of the new design, taking the weight of the walls and transferring force directly to the ground. The pointed arch was the defining internal characteristic of Gothic architecture. It is important as both decorative and practical. It effectively distributed the force of the heavier ceilings and bulkier designs and would support much more weight than previous simple pillars and allowed for much more vertical weight, symbolically trying to reach the heavens. Vaulted ceilings utilized the technology of the pointed arch to spread force and weight from upper floors. The arch therefore gave the impression of height and magnificence. The distribution of force within the vaulted ceilings enabled vaults to be built in different shapes and sizes too. Previously, vaults could only have been circular and rectangular. One of the most notable characteristics of Gothic architecture is, is the gargoyle. Gargoyles are decorative, monstrous little creatures perched at long, perched at along the roofs and battlements of the Gothic buildings and castles. They are spouts enabling red water to drain off the roof and gush through their mouths before plummeting to the ground. They were also intended to evoke fear into the hearts of ill-educated medieval pigeons, scaring them into the church or cathedral. 
Many gargoyles include elements of grotesque, exaggerated, ill-featured or threatening poses, which would have reared down from one high. In a world marked with fear and superstition, these creepy creatures would undoubtedly have encouraged many to seek solace and safety inside of a church or a cathedral protected from the demons and cows which roam outside. Let us now look at the timeline. 